Hey guys, what's up? It's Craig. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss whether live plants or fake plants are better for your pet reptile. So just to let you know before the video starts, the live plant I'm using in the demonstration is just a lucky bamboo, and the fake plant is by, I believe it's Zoomed, it's one of their silk plants. It's a really good quality fake one. I would highly recommend this one for if you're using fake plants. So both live plants and fake plants have their ups and downs in using them for your reptiles. I'm gonna be discussing which ones I recommend and for what reasons, as well as the ups and downs of both of them. So right now I'm gonna talk about the advantages of using live plants for your reptiles. My personal preference is using live plants as much as possible when you have a reptile. So some of the ups of having live plants in your reptiles enclosures are the following. They increase the humidity really well. Plants naturally increase the humidity because they are made of water. So if you have animals that require high humidity, such as crested geckos, day geckos, chameleons, rainbow boas, ball pythons, stuff like that, using live plants in your tank is going to help keep the humidity a lot higher for them. The second good thing about using live plants is that they are realistic looking. Something that is very important for me in keeping my pets is trying to make their enclosures look as naturalistic as possible. I like to try to um, replicate their natural environment as much as possible. I want to try to provide the best life as possible for my animals. And personally, I feel like live plants is what helps make the tank more natural and realistic, kind of. And if you're using live plants in more of like an ecosystem type of varium, which they often called bioactive or vivariums. Live plants help to break down the waste of your animals. If your animals have any fecal matter in there or shed skin, the plants will help biodegrade it and break it down and then they will turn that waste into nutrients that helps the plant grow better. Some of the downsides of using live plants for your reptiles tanks is that they do require it to be watered. So if you were using fake plants, they don't need to be watered obviously because they aren't real. It depends on the species of plants. Some plants like a lot more water than others. There are some plants like succulents and cactuses that do great in desert terrariums. That way they won't need a lot of water and they can take the arid environment and the warmer temperatures a lot better. But there are some plants that do a lot better in a constantly humid, moist environment. Things like pothos, bromeliads, and ferns will do their best in a glass tank. That way they keep in the moisture a lot better. So something with live plants that can be both a pro and a con for them is that they grow. It could be a pro because it helps to fill out the tank and make it look more natural, especially for tanks that seem to be kind of empty and just lacking something. If you have a plant in there that's growing and thriving really well, it's gonna help fill in the air areas and provide more hiding spaces for your animals. However, if you do use certain plants like the Lucky Bamboo, which is a great example, they grow pretty darn tall and they can do it pretty quickly. What's kind of bad about using bamboo is that the stalks typically only go up instead of out, so that's the only way they can go up and eventually they're going to be hitting the screen top or the glass top and you're going to have to trim them back. And things like bamboo especially, when you trim them, it takes kind of a while for them to put out new growth. So next I wanted to talk about fake plants. First let's talk about the pros of fake plants. One of the main pros of fake plants that are really appealing to people is how they are pretty easy to clean, especially these silk ones. If you get animal feces or dirt or anything like that on here, just use water. You might need to use vinegar, but pretty much if you use any kind of pressure, you scrub it with your fingers or an old toothbrush, it's gonna come off and it washes pretty good. And you can't really do that with live plants because obviously the leaves will rip and tear if you try to scrub them. It's kind of better with live plants to just pinch off the leaves that are dirty or gross. Um, but you can, with live plants, use water sprayers to help get off some of the feces. Obviously, depending on the animal, it's gonna be a little harder to clean um, if they do poop on their plants, but most of the time, I find, you could use a mist bottle and just spray the plants clean if they are the live ones. But yeah, a pro with these guys is you don't need to worry if they get feces on them. You could literally just remove the whole plant and wash it. And live plants are obviously planted and you're gonna have to rip up the whole tank to, if you wanted to do anything kind of major, like a major clean out. Another pro to using fake plants is typically if they're pretty easy, you don't have to worry about using lights and upping the humidity if they don't require it. If you're keeping things like leopard geckos, bearded dragons, Euromastics, um, Kenyan sand boas, anything that lives in a more arid environment, 
fake plants are a lot easier in my opinion to use and like succulents or cactuses using cactuses in arid animals enclosures can be fine depending on what kind of cactus it is but some animals have more of a sensitive skin than others and there are certain cactus species that have really tiny microscopic um, thorns or like prickles on them that could get into your reptile skin and harm them and there also are some cactuses that have way too big thorns and prickles that could damage your reptile and they could even potentially blind them and those are the reasons why it would be good to use fake cacti like I have this one in my leopard geckos enclosure another pro to using fake plants is that they can be pretty inexpensive depending on where you get them from if you are going to get more of a reptile grade plant like these ones are by exoterra that have kind of like a little hook on the back and they have a suction cup I removed the suction cup but if you want to get some of these the prices can range between two to fifteen dollars depending on the size and type of fake plant you want to get however they can be a lot more affordable if you buy them in bulk or which is something that I would do if I was planning on doing a full fake plant tank which I don't have at the current moment but if I was to do that you could go get craft store plants plants from stores like AC Moore or Michaels craft store anything like that the fake plants that they would find in the flower section which they have vines and stuff like that most of those are going to be pet safe as long as the leaves don't easily come off when you pull them like this and they don't rip when you try to add pressure to them they should be completely fine just make sure they are disinfected and safe so another good thing about using fake plants is that they obviously don't require a light source which could be a downside to using regular live plants reptiles like crested geckos leopard geckos gargoyle geckos ball pythons stuff like that that don't require a direct basking light with UVA and UVB both available. It can be pretty hard to keep certain species of plants alive without that sunlight replacement. Fake plants, you obviously don't need to worry about that. The plants are not going to get damaged and die from not having a light exposure. Fake plants do come pretty bushy, I guess full right away, and you don't need to worry about them growing in. But you know, you also get what you get. This plant itself might look really beautiful, but you might get sick and tired of it. It might look exactly the same all the time, and you might want to change it up for your animal. And using live plants, does have that perk they will grow and you can prune them the pro about using live plants is that they provide sometimes depending on the plant natural leaf litter for your animals to burrow or hide in or the leaf litter can also provide a better ecosystem for your cleanup crew like your isopods or springtails in your substrate certain plants like umbrella plants and ficuses oftentimes drop their leaves and the fallen leaves can offer a hiding spot to more terrestrial animals it also helps the tank look more natural obviously when you go out into the rain forest, the jungle, the desert, not everything is going to be lush green and beautiful and surviving. There's going to be some browns and some grays and some yellows, different shades of plants. That's something I find with live plants is a lot better. It's a lot easier to find different colors in live plants. You can find plants that produce flowers like lilies, orchids, African violets, um, certain cactus species will flower in your tanks. You can also find plants like begonias, different kinds of pothoses, bromeliads that will have different colors and patterns on their leaves. That way they will give more of a variety, a texture, and more of a pop of color to your tank. So another downside to using live plants in your tanks could be the price. Live plants, depending on where you get them, are going to be pricey. I do believe at Petco and PetSmart, they have a very limited supply of the variety of plants that they keep. So if you're looking to get more into growing your plants for your tanks, you might want to get them at a local nursery like Lowe's Home Depot or a private owned plant nursery. You can also pick them up at Reptile Expos for better prices and you can also propagate your own plants which will be very helpful in the long run especially if you have a lot of planted tanks. One of the more affordable live plants I would recommend like I said before was the Lucky Bamboo. It's because you could easily get these at different kinds of markets and craft fairs and pet stores for a dollar or sometimes even less than a dollar a stalk of bamboo which is definitely pretty affordable for people. A possible downside again with live plants is depending on where you're getting from they're going to be treated with chemicals if you get them from nurseries like Home Depot and Lowe's um, big like box stores like that most of the time they do have um, 
pesticides on their plants. If you're going to be getting live plants from one of those kinds of stores, like a hardware store or something, I will almost always recommend the indoor plant section over the outdoor plant section any day. And if your plants are purchased from a big box store or a nursery, you are going to want to make sure you clean them before you put them into your tank. That way you will make sure that they are not going to kill your animal. Harmful chemicals and pesticides on plants or fertilizers, especially fertilizers, if they're put into your animal's enclosure, they can consume it, inhale it, or ingest it, and it can harm them badly. This is something you want to avoid at all costs. So if you are getting plants, make sure they are A, either bare root like these are. Bare root basically just means it's nothing but the roots, no soil. But if you were getting them and they're pre-potted, what you're going to want to do is you are going to want to root, remove as much soil or substrate, which could be either moss or gravel as well, as much substrate as possible from the plant's root system. That way you won't have to risk extra fertilizers and stuff transferring into your animal's enclosure. And you also want to rinse off the plant and its root system thoroughly with water. Another downside with live plants is if your animal is partially or fully herbivorous or has a plant-based diet. Animals like the iguanas, bearded dragons, tortoises, turtles, a couple other lizards. I don't really think any snakes are herbivorous. When having a live plant to tag with those kind of animals, you want to look up on Google, this video will not provide that, animal safe plants for that specific species. Some animals Certain plants can be toxic if they eat it, but there are others that are completely fine. I know personally that um, if you use pothos or pathos or pothos, depending on how you pronounce it, if you use that for most tortoise and iguana species, I am almost positive that it's going to be safe if ingested because I do watch some other YouTubers who have larger species of reptiles that are herbivorous and they have those plants in their area. I know also banana plants are safe, but you are going to want to do more research. However, certain animals like my tortoises cannot be kept with live plants. There are some people, especially the people who have the very large enclosures or outdoor enclosures who can keep live grasses and stuff like that in their tortoise enclosures. Personally, my tortoises, I tried keeping live plants in them and they ate them and they dug them all up. I had spineless prickly pear and aloe vera in there and they both ate them and destroyed them. Another good thing about using fake plants is, I guess, finishing touches. And what I mostly mean by finishing touches is top parts and branches of your tanks and stuff like that. The tops of the tanks, especially if you're using live plants, are going to be pretty bare at the beginning of the setup time. And using fake plants, that way you can use suction cups or twist ties or anything and put them along the top of the tank and kind of add in some foliage until those plants grow in. Certain kinds of fake plants can damage your animal depending on what species it is. Some animals, like day geckos, have very sensitive skin and if you're using plants like specifically aquarium or fish plants for animals that have a more sensitive skin. These include day geckos, crested geckos, um, some kinds of snakes and other lizards. Depending on the species, you're going to want to do more research on that species when you're picking it out, but they can have very sensitive skin, and if you're using any kind of plant that has a sharp edge to it, it can damage their skin, and that's most of the problems with fake plants. A lot of animals that are herbivorous could try to eat fake plants and it can ingest them and it could cause damage to them so you might want to watch out and especially get a higher quality fake plant that way they can't take a chomp out of it and choke and die depending on how intelligent your animal is they can learn that fake plants are not meant to be eaten they eventually will differentiate them versus their actual food so in conclusion live plants or fake plants depending on your situation both can have their advantages and disadvantages I try to use live plants as much as possible and I try to make it so I include at least one live plant in all of my tropical terrariums that way it can help keep the humidity up a little bit I personally don't think it's a problem if there are fake plants in there as long as they are safe and have all the other requirements that I talked about in this video taken into mind if you like this video guys make sure to give it a thumbs up comment down below if you found this helpful if you have any other questions I will try my best to answer them in the comments below I have owned reptiles and amphibians for over 10 years now so I have a pretty good amount of experience Experience when it comes to this kind of stuff and I also do have a green thumb when it comes to growing things so I do know a little bit more about plants than your average 17 year old so if you do have any questions about live plants I will try my best to answer them in the comments down below make sure to subscribe because I post new animal videos every week and I will see you guys in my next video later guys bye